Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. I love a wee Donner, but I'm not here to confess my appetite for Turkish rotisserie meat. Instead, we're going to talk about Donner, the musical equipment company. You might be familiar with them from their affordable range of miniature effects pedals, but did you know they also make beginner guitars? This is the DST100R, and it comes with everything a beginner might need to get started on their journey to electric guitar stardom. I know what you might be thinking, Colin, is a guitar this cheap going to be any good, or will it fall apart like a badly packed kebab? Well, there's only one way to find out. In the box we have a guitar strap, some guitar picks, a capo, a clip-on tuner, spare set of strings, an instrument cable, nice little gig bag, a 3 watt desktop amplifier which we'll look at more towards the end of the video, and of course the guitar itself. As you can see, if you are an absolute beginner starting from nothing, Donner have ensured that you will not be left wanting for your essential accessories. I've chosen the metallic red finish as this is as close as Donner gets to the Hank Marvin vibe, but if red ain't your thing, there's a range of other colours available. From a quick cursory glance, the instrument looks to be flawlessly finished and uh, very well put together. The fretboard edges are rounded over, which is a pleasant surprise, and the frets are uh, nice and smooth, there's no sharp edges or rough points anywhere. There is one very minor issue right out of the box which is pretty common with inexpensive beginner guitars and that's the strings down here sit about a mile off the fretboard making it more difficult to play than it needs to be. Fortunately this is extremely easy to fix and Donner even include the Allen key wrenches needed to make adjustments to the string height to get these lowered down to a much more comfortable playing position. Also, listen to this. That strange reverb-like sound that follows the notes is actually the springs resonating in the rear cavity with each string strike. This is common for guitars that have vibrato bridges, although this is fairly pronounced. It's easy to fix by simply damping the springs with a block of foam or a piece of tape. I think I'm going to get these strings off of here and get a brand new, fresh set put on and do all the adjustments to the string height, the intonation and the neck relief. And while the strings are out of the way, it'll give me an opportunity to remove all of this protective plastic. First impressions matter, and this advice I give to you regardless of if you are buying a beginner Donner guitar or a three grand PRS. Get a fresh set of strings on there and give it a bit of a setup so that your first experience of this instrument is the best that it can possibly be. I have videos about changing strings and setting intonation on the channel and you'll find links to those in the description if you want to get yourself up to speed on what you need to do. <laughs> Changing the strings and adjusting the action and intonation gives me an opportunity to scrutinise the quality of this instrument a little further. All of the adjustment screws move smoothly and don't bind up. The strings don't get stuck in the trem block the way that I've seen with other cheap instruments. The tuners move smoothly when tuning up and the strings can move freely through the nut and don't snag. 
These are all great signs that, despite the low price, the instrument is put together extremely well. The metallic paint job gives this instrument a certain allure that I think would have been lost had they opted for a more basic solid colour finish, and small details like the three-ply pickguard give the impression that this is a far more expensive guitar. The pickups are of your most basic low-cost variety, iron slugs with a ceramic magnet glued to the back. Be there any weakness to this instrument, they be here, but I do believe they sound good enough to give a beginner guitarist a full palette of tones. More seasoned guitarists will probably want to upgrade the pickups at some point, but considering a good set of pickups will cost you as much, if not more than the entire guitar, it doesn't feel fair to mark this instrument down for that. I think I've kept you waiting long enough, let's hear how this guitar sounds. Now like I said before, first impressions matter, so I'm going to go through my usual setup with the valve amp before we move on to an amplifier a beginner is more likely to use. I want to hear what this guitar sounds like at its absolute best. With that control established, let's take a look at the tiny amplifier supplied by Donner in this bundle. This is a rechargeable 3 watt amplifier with up to 5 hours of battery life on a single charge, a headphone output for silent practice and an auxiliary in so you can connect your phone to play music or backing tracks through this. Now taking into consideration that all of the sounds are coming from two tiny speakers in here and it doesn't get all that loud, it genuinely is quite surprising how good this sounds for a tiny portable amplifier. Donner have done something incredibly clever here. As I said up top, they're more well known for their miniature effects pedals and I would put money on them having repurposed one of the distortion pedal circuits to work in this amplifier. Essentially what I believe they've done here is taken a distortion pedal circuit and connected the output of that to a tiny 3 watt hi-fi amplifier, the type you'd find inside cheap Bluetooth speakers or portable radios. You can really tell that by switching between the clean and distortion sounds of the amp. The clean sounds are just the pickups but louder, there's no EQing or tone stacking going on to change the sound. But switching into the distortion there's suddenly a tone stack there replicating the EQ of a much larger amplifier and there's a surprising amount of saturated distortion on tap.
The bottleneck in here is obviously the tiny speakers. Were you to drive a conventional speaker cabinet with the amplifier contained in here, I think it would sound incredible. Considering the amplifier is usually the first thing that players upgrade as they progress with learning guitar, Donner providing this for the kit is actually a very smart move. Even after you've upgraded the amplifier to something better, like for example the Fender Mustang LT25, this is still handy as a portable amplifier to take around with you travelling, especially since it's battery powered. Seeing as we have that little Fender amplifier out, we might as well plug this Donner guitar through it to get a more reasonable representation of the sounds a beginner might get from their first proper amplifier. <laughs> Let's recap the positives of this Donner guitar. It's very well constructed, flawlessly finished, and the fretboard is prepared very nicely. After a little bit of setup, it's comfortable to play, it stays in tune incredibly well, and there are no frustrating niggles about the performance either. The sounds from this are all pretty decent considering the price, especially the humbucker in the bridge position. All of that sounds like a winner. So what are the complaints? In all honesty, very, very little. At this price point, you'd almost expect there to be a critical flaw that would take down the integrity of the entire instrument, but I'll be damned if I can find one. To be excessively picky, you'll notice that I haven't used the whammy bar in this video. That's not because it didn't stay in tune. When I was testing out dive bombs, it would stay in tune perfectly fine. It's more that it's just a bit stiff and awkward to use, and that's par for the course with most cheap vibrato bridges. These generally need to be much higher quality, better engineered parts for them to work easily and comfortably, and that's not what we have here. We've got some very basic hardware, which works, just doesn't work all that well. Also, I would advise that beginners ignore the whammy bar for now until they've progressed much further with learning the instrument anyway. I also did notice a little bit of backlash in one of the tuning machines. It tunes up to pitch nice and smoothly, and it'll hold its pitch there, you can stretch the string and the tuner doesn't slip, but when you go to tune back down again, you'll get a moment of zero friction before the teeth of the gears re-engage. These are basic tuners, and they generally need to be made to a much higher quality for the teeth to constantly mesh in both directions, so a little bit of play in the gears on such basic tuners is to be expected. The neck pickups also may be a little bit muddy compared to what I'm used to, but it's certainly not bad. Really? Is that all you've got to complain about, Colin? The Huawei bar's a bit stiff. Oh, that tuner's got play in it. The neck pickup isn't up to my elitist standards. Yeah, I suppose I did have to dig pretty deep for those small potatoes. The truth is, this is such a good, well-made instrument that it doesn't even feel fair to complain about those things. This is currently retailing for around €130 Euro for the guitar and all the accessories, which are all surprisingly good quality in their own right, and it brings me back to the point that the fact you can even get an instrument for that low a price that doesn't immediately fall apart in your hands is impressive in itself, never mind one that's flawlessly finished, plays super well, stays in tune, and sounds pretty decent on top of that. If you grab yourself one of these and somewhere down the line upgrade the tuning machines and the pickups, then you'll have a long and happy life with this guitar. As a project instrument, an upgrade platform, or something to practice maintenance and setup of guitars, this is perfect. And for beginners, there's an excellent instrument in here for you to learn on, once of course you get the strings low enough to play it comfortably. I had a lot of fun setting this one up, playing around with it, and getting great sounds. I don't think I would have been angry if this were my first guitar. It's really good. I wouldn't be making this video if it wasn't. If this was utter garbage, I'd have sent it back and told them to do better. Fortunately, I didn't have to do that. Good job, Donner. If you want to grab one of these for yourself, then links will be in the description below. And don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe.